let's hit it. Okay, so uh, so today I want to discuss uh, banner from the spaces. So first, uh, a little reminder from last time, just to remind you what we did last week. Uh, so uh, for all the talk, I always fix E to be a local field uh, with residue field finite residue field FQ, and I choose a uniformizer phi. So basically, there are like two situations, right? Either E is a finite extension of QP, or we are in positive characteristic, and E is a field of the uh, Laurent series uh, over the finite field FQ. So that was the first piece of the data. And then the other one was we have chosen uh, S to be a perfect weight space over FQ. So my notation I used to denote the category of all perfect weight space of perfect weight spaces over FQ. So basically, this, so this is an added space which locally is of the form spa RR plus, where R is a tail ring uh, over FQ, which is perfect. This is really what this uh, condition of being perfect to it means in characteristic P. And to the datum of E and S, we attach uh, an attic space uh, over spa E, uh, which is a so called relative far quantum curve uh, for E over S, and denoted by XSE. And it was defined as a quotient by some Frobenius operator of another attic space uh, Y. Uh, defined using uh, bit vectors. Okay, um, I did not have so much time to really discuss the geometry of the far quantum curve, but maybe I can say that if you want to read more about the, the curve itself and its properties, uh, like there are two good references uh, at least. Uh, so there is a paper by Farg and Fontaine uh, in the proceedings of uh, conference in uh, Durham. So you can find it on the web page of FARG. And another nice reference is the Bourbaki report of Matthew Moore. So in both papers, we will find a much more detailed discussion of the geometry of the far quantum curve where S is, when S is a geometry point, which is the case where the, the curve was first uh, defined and set. Okay. And, uh, on this, uh, if we specialize the discussion to, to this situation where S is a geometric point, so spa C, uh, C naught, with C being a complete algebraically closed field uh, over FQ, uh, then we also saw that there is a nice classification of uh, vector bundles uh, on this uh, curve. Uh, and more precisely, uh, we saw that there is a natural functor from the category of isocrystals over E towards vector bundles on this curve. And uh, the claim, which is a, a difficult theorem of far content, is that this functor is essentially subjective. So because we know what this category looks like, again, explicitly, completely, this just means that any vector bundle of E on uh, SP, Maybe I should write X C E to make clear that S is not a general perfect space, but really just a geometric point. Uh, is uh, of the form. It's just a finite direct sum of uh, vector bundles attached to uh, this uh, simple of crystal of uh, various rational so on the high uh, high between zero and uh, one on R are uh, rational numbers. So it looks a bit like the classification of vector bundles on the complex projective line, except that uh, now you see rational numbers instead of just integers. Um, yeah, that's a difficult result. Uh, there is a new proof of this in the paper of Park Schultzer, which is in some sense simpler but uses also more technology. Uh, like already, the classification of line bundles is non trivial. So, the line bundle of the claim is that the Picard group is isomorphic to Z for each integer D or the 
you need a line bundle of degree D. And uh, so yeah, this function is also faithful. Uh, yes, but it's but very it's far. Yeah, yeah, it's very also, uh, I should uh, repeat this again. It's uh, this functor is very far from being true. There are many more morphisms in the category of vector bundles, and they are in the category of other crystals. Uh, so classification of line bundles is already interesting. Uh, and there is a nice discussion of it in the first uh, chapter of uh, Park Schultz's uh, big paper. Uh, namely, uh, it's connected to uh, Lubin-Tay theory, Lubin-Tay formal group. Uh, so I, I don't want to enter really into this, but uh, I can just say that uh, something that can be proved is that if if you have a perfectoid space, okay, affinoid perfectoid uh, over a Q, and you have some untilt <coughs> S sharp uh, over E. There is an identification between uh, the space of global sections. Uh, let's say, yeah, on uh, the far content curve for any for over this uh, affinity particular S of this line bundle O of one. So the construction I gave of this functor, uh, I, I, I made it only when S is a geometric point, and only in this case when you're able to like prove such a statement. But the construction was making sense of uh, any if I replace this geometric point, but any, any perfect space in characteristic P. So, for example, this vector bundle is always defined on X S E, whatever S is, and so this is an E vector space, right? And there is a natural identification between uh, this e vector space and what you obtain by uh, taking the uh, evaluating on uh, this entity on, on the first part of this entity uh, the universal cover of uh, so this is so universal cover. The Lubin takes my book flow uh, B uh, over O, which is endowed with a structure of an E vector space precisely using this, like it's, uh, it has an OE module structure coming from uh, this uh, formal book flow. And then because you take this inverse limit of multiplication by pi, you make multiplication by pi invertible. So it's naturally an electron space. So there is, yeah. There is this interesting and a priori a bit curious relation between uh, line bundles on the far content curve and Lubin Tate formal group laws and Park also in their new proof of the classification result theorem. They, they, they use various properties of, say, for example, the logarithm map for, for this Lubin Tate group law to check various claims about line numbers. And we will see this, uh, this fact uh, reappear later. So that's why I wanted to, to mention it here. Okay. Uh, yes, so O of one half is uh, if you look at the degree two, uh, so you have your local fit E, which I fixed, and then you have for any H, you would have the degree H and ramify extension of E, and then uh, this vector bundle here 
of scope one over h is just a push forward of one uh, on the far content curve attached to h. So phi h would be the map from the far content curve of this anomaly phi extension of the h. It's not aligned on the line anymore. So uh, if lambda is uh, d over h, d is a degree and h is a one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's why line bundles correspond to integers. No, no denominator. So yeah, at the end you can use this. <coughs> okay. So now I want to see, discuss uh, what can be said about, I mean, various results about vector bundle on more general perfectly basis. So what about? So we have this nice specification theorem uh, when S is a geometric point. Of course, you should not expect to have such a classification for any S, uh, but you can still put some structural results about vector bundles. We start with the definition. So, uh, first I recall what the vector bundle is, even, even if this was already used here. Uh, a vector bundle, so let, let S be a perfectly space. But I so a vector bundle over this ST is just a finite degree. I already, I already said this last time, but let me just repeat it. And I also want to define another notion, which is a notion of a flat polyram sheet. Uh, over XSE. So this is an uh, XSE module which can uh, locally for the analytic topology on uh, this uh, relative part content curve be uh, written as the co-kernel of uh, the fiber-wise on S injective map uh, between uh, two vector bundles on each S. So the definition is just that locally on S, sorry, locally on XS, uh, I can, uh, if I call this OXS module F, I can find uh, a presentation of this form. Well, E and E prime are two vector bundles, and this map uh, is injective and remains injective whenever I like, if I base change. Uh, along any uh, geometric point of S. Okay, so uh, why in algebraic geometry over a relative curve, you could make uh, a similar definition, and uh, this would be equivalent to saying that uh, you have a, a coherent shift on this relative curve, uh, which is flat, not over the the relative curve, of course, but over the base S. Here there is no map from XSE to S, so that would not, I, could, I cannot make this an analogous definition, but instead I, I can use this other property. So I won't really use this notion today very seriously, but it would be useful next time. And some examples where, of course, any vector bundle. Uh, is the flat polygon sheet. But uh, other class of examples. So I remind you that we have seen last time that uh, untilts of S uh, give rise to Cartier divisors 
on uh, the relative far complex curve. And so if S is an entity of S over, over E, so corresponding to the proton bedding of S sharp inside this S E, and then As sharp along this map. Uh, this is also uh, an example of the flat conjunction. This test kind of shift setting. So if you have a, a Cartier divisor of degree one, which is a flat coherent sheet, does it necessarily correspond to an unfilled thing? Is that a precise statement? Uh, if you have a flat coherent sheet of Oh, yeah, a Cartier divisor of degree one, which is a flat coherent sheet in this sense, isn't is it, is it necessarily arising from this construction? Uh, like, is this the right way to say relative effect of Cartier divisor? Perhaps. Yeah, I guess that would be uh, that probably correct. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot, uh, I'm not sure 100%, but uh, I mean, there is a well defined notion of ca closed Cartier divisor in this case, which is discussed in the Berkeley notes, yeah, but that's. Probably equivalent to that. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, there go. go from uh, another definition. Uh, So uh, I want to define the V topology. So the V site on all capital spaces of characteristic P. So the underlying category is uh, the category of perfect spaces uh, over FQ. And uh, so I want to undo this with a certain bottom V topology. And what you do. Is that uh, you declare that a collection uh, is a cover uh, if, uh, well, if it is a uh, And uh, it, it's not a finite collection, it's any, it's, it's not necessarily finite, no. But no, I, I put a condition that uh, for each uh, quasi compact open U in S, we want that there exists, uh, there exists a finite subset. In I, and for each uh, I in this uh, uh, I subset J, um, uh, quasi compact open uh, U I in S I, uh, such that the images of the, this U I cover that U is a union. I J okay, so yeah. isn't the first condition yes it is you, you mean so long long? Yeah. Yes. Do you really mean this or do you mean F inverse U equals U in I and J U I? Uh I think I mean this. Uh, why should it have the I of UI be? Oh, it is open. Oh my God. Never mind. No, it's well, sorry. Uh, so that's a condition I put it. It's all right. Yeah. The FI need not be open. No. 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 And, okay, what is a bit. Uh, so it's some kind of analog of the FPQC topology in this setting. 
except that, well, as in the definition of the PQC cover, one puts a, an analogous condition. Uh, but it's true that usually there is flat in a PQC, you, you, you put some condition on the map. Uh, here there is no condition. So it's, it's a very fine topology, and it's a bit surprising that you can do anything with it, but this is what uh, also was able to do. Uh, maybe I can make two remarks about this definition. Uh, something which is not uh, a cover is a counterexample. If you take, say, the point, there's an origin in the disk to carry some, say, non a median field. Uh, and uh, you look at the disk of a K, or maybe let's say the, the perfect wave version of the disk, because I only define this topology in the perfect wave setting, uh, and you remove the origin. Okay, so this is not the cover of the perfect wave disk. Right, because if you look at say, say a small a disk of smaller radius around the origin, uh, you won't be uh, able to uh, uh, to cover it uh, in this way, right? Because because you infinitely because yeah, I mean, if you take uh, some uh, quasi compact open inside here, it will be uh, contained in the annulus of. Uh, radius r and one or some r strictly between zero and one. So just to see how this condition uh, what looks like in practice. And something else I should say also is that if f is a morphism between two analytical spaces, so analytic I recall means that it's locally the so added spectrum of the state pair. Uh, Instead of just a general uh, Hooper pair, uh, then if you look at the underlying map on topological spaces, uh, this map is generalized. So meaning that if it contains the points, it contains also the image of F, also contains generalizations of this point. Basically, it's come. Down to the fact that in the analytic world, generalizations of the point like they form this totally other chain of points that correspond to the spectrum of evaluation. Uh, so, in particular, if F is subjective, if F is subjective, uh, then the underlying topological map is a quotient map. And so, how was this related to? Uh, this is because I think, for example, uh, this topology looks also a bit like the H topology. And I think uh, in the definition of the H topology, one uh, has a similar issue a priori, and one puts a condition, which I forgot now, uh, to ensure that uh, to, to get around this issue. But I was pointing out that. In the analytic setting, this issue does not appear because any subjective map is an actual equation. For me, it makes me more comfortable with what you wrote with the FI of Yeah, because it's, it's generalizing is just like basically like, okay. the same as open, but without finding it. For example, last, this will imply that if you take a topological space and look at this underline, yeah. uh, uh, this, this implies that. It, if uh, how do I call it? Uh, Z in the topological space is a functor underlying Z, which sends S in perfect Q, and the function of 
uh, this topological space of S to Z is a DC. And uh, difficult result of Schultze is that the V side is a uh, subcanonical, meaning that any uh, representable pre shift is in fact the shift for the V to put. So, in particular, also like the shift O, which is just an S to section of uh, the structure shift on S and the shift O plus there are issues. I'm all right. The second one has higher cohomology, but the first one doesn't. Or... Uh, that's correct, yes. But I mean, it has almost no, no cohomology in positive degree. If you work in this almost capital size, but that's correct, yes. Uh, this may have higher cohomology, not the other one. Mm, yeah. So basically, the argument of first one uses this, this topological fact to, to reduce to the affinoid case of like to the case where you have. Of a V cover, which is formed by some affinoid trajectory space, covered by some something affinoid trajectory, uh, using point two, and then basically when you when it is reduced to proving that this this is indeed a V sheet, and the pattern of the proof is something very typical of all the V descent statements that Schultz proves. Uh, first, you uh, you you do. Uh, the coetal cover, so something which is an inverse limit of etal morphisms, to get to uh, an addict space which is no, uh, of course, strictly totally disconnected, which is basically just a profinite union of uh, addict spectra of, uh, of like of geometric forms, like things of the forms plus C, C plus. And because C plus is a valuation ring in C, then he is able to prove that. So you argue everywhere modulo some given uniformizer, and he is able to prove some kind of automatic flatness statement uh, over uh, in this situation because everything is just evaluation. So this means that basically proof of the descent is decomposed in two steps. One is poetal descent, which means I mean it's, it's, it's not easy, but it can be done by. Uh, reducing to like etal descent, and the other step is uh, some kind of automatic flatness, like flat FPQC descent. Uh, once you are over this weird, uh, um, frightening, uh, strictly to tell this space. But yeah, they, many descent statements are put in this way. Okay, but this shows that this a priori uh, some site is actually. I mean, one can walk with it. Uh, that's the first result. Then another result I want to mention, which is more relevant to the discussion of today, is that the pre tax uh, uh, over pair FQ uh, which I will denote by one, which sends S to the group weight of Vector bundles of XSE and uh, O uh, flat, which is uh, S particularly over FQ to the group of the flat human sheaves. Uh, or XSE, these are actually uh, stacks for the Vito group. So, uh, yeah, so this, this, this is like very specific. 
one should not expect v decent results for like vector bundles or, or coherent chips or whatever on a general addict spaces. Uh, this is really something uh, which is specific to the perfect Euclid case. On the far quantum curve, there's an addict space over E, which is not perfect Euclid. But it's not, in some sense, it's not too far from being perfect Euclid because if you uh, extend scalars from E to its uh, completed algebraic closure, and then it becomes a perfect Euclid space. And so uh, you can prove V descent results over PEP for vector bundles or such on perfect Euclid basis. And then from this, uh, Make a bit of descent argument to conclude that you also have uh, V descent for such categories on relative part from the curves. So the first take note is due to KLILU, and the second one, uh, we, we prove it by with, with your hands on shoots by uh, actually proving something stronger that you have V descent for perfect complexity on uh, relative part from the curves. But this is to do this, we use a result of man. So the, Difficult part of the work is really uh, this uh, force coding work of, of mine. And, and once you have this descent of perfect complex, it reduces uh, what you want for that curly So um, again, some remarks maybe. So uh, I want to mention another result of KLILU. So uh, a vector bundle. From the relative part of the curve, which is fiberwise on S uh, if E is the vector bundle on the relative part of the curve, which is fiberwise on S. To uh, all lambda. So by this, I mean that whenever I choose a geometric point of S, I pull back uh, along the. Whenever you choose a geometric point, then you can. The section of the curve is compiled, so you can just pull back E here, and you require that it's isomorphic to all lambda, so it's semi stable of sort lambda. Uh, is in fact is. Uh, if E is such a vector bundle, then there exists a recover of S uh, such that E becomes really isomorphic to all lambda, not just like point wise. Mm -hmm. We use this this fact later. Uh, maybe another remark is uh, V descent is useful uh, for like proving the various results about vector bundles uh, or uh, that coherent shift. Uh, for example, something you can uh, write some of my reduction to the case of geometric points. Uh, S is a geometric point. Uh, an instance of this is the following fact. So uh, you can prove that for any Fat coherent sheet on, on the, the relative part of the curve uh, exists V locally on S, uh, an exact sequence of the following form. Um, S E minus one A O X S E N to the power 
or B going to F, uh, where N is in some integer, and A and B are also uh, non negative integers. So you can find such, resolu such resolutions like, uh, like globally, but at least after replacing S by a V cover, you can uh, resolve a flat Cohérent shift by seeing that vector bundles that you understand in quite explicitly, which, which come from like this, uh, from my stuff. So, Arthur, please. Yes. I have a small question on the one. Uh, uh, the first one now. Can one compute the H1 in the D topology of GF, uh, H2? I mean, the broad group, but in the D topology, what is that? Is that zero? Or? The broad group of what? Of S. Of S? Yeah. Uh, because if you, you say that, uh, yeah. Uh, but so S is any perfect weight space now uh, of characteristic P. Yes. Uh, it's just suggested by your by your point one. Wait, don't worry. Just to, no, it's just not, a question. Uh, I, I I don't quite see the relation between this fact and here e is not a vector bundle on S, right? It's a vector bundle on X S. Yes. Uh, so where how is that related? Uh, yeah, maybe I should ask the same question but on S but on the X. That's S. Ah, on X S. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Oh, well, it's really it's really in this case, shouldn't the brow group also be trivial? Yes, that's what I would. Yeah. Yeah. You can maybe reduce to the, in some way, to the claim uh, you know for when S is a joint topology. Yeah. Yes. Like you can find a V cover by something strictly to, strictly totally disconnected. So like profile union of geometric points, yes. and then you know by a uh, fact that the power group vanishes when S is a geometric point. The Brauer group of the elliptic curve, so maybe you can reduce the claim in general. Sorry, what is written there? The descent is useful for what? Uh, yeah, that's a vague claim uh, for proving some results about okay. flat query run shifts, but uh, as I said, no, reducing to the yeah. case where you can classify them. Now I want to say something about, I want to come to Banach from a species, so I want to say something about cohomology. Vector bundles are flat coherency uh, on this curve. Start with a, a proposition. Uh, so again, I fix S a uh, perfect space of a Q. And I also choose a flat coherent sheet on XS. So notation is this is a notation I introduced in the theory. So I uh, insist on the fact that this really means a uh, uh, flat coherent shift on XS, not, not on S itself. Uh, then you can consider the functor uh, which sends T uh, in uh, perfect space over S, so in particular also belongs to this category Q, uh, to the cohomology or analytic topology uh, on the far constant curve XTE. And the full back of F to uh, so XT. Then this is in fact a V shift uh, of complexes, uh, which I will really denote by V 
magic taxes. Why is this notation? Well, in fact, there is there is no a, there is no morphism from X S to S morphism of Alice spaces, but there is still a morphism from the uh, uh, V side of X uh, uh, for the V side of X S to the V side of S. Also, I did not define what the V side of something which is not perfect to it means, but you can also you could also do it. And then this is really the push forward. You, you could consider the push forward along this morphism of set. Uh, claim is that this is just computing voices. You don't need to shift it out. Uh, so this is a sheet, and uh, depending on what the slopes of f look like, you can uh, prove some vanishing results. Uh, so first of all, uh, yeah. So you always have uh, if i. Uh, no, okay. So what I want to say is that if All slopes of F. So when I speak about slopes, I mean fiberwise on S. So whenever I choose a geometric point of S and pull back F to X uh, over this so far content curve over this geometry for this over this geometric point, then I know what vector bundles or, flat co or coherent sheet look like. And so I can uh, look at the slopes. Uh, by convention, the slope could be uh, if you have some torsion, then the slope could be plus infinity. And uh, so, if all slopes fiberwise and S of my flat coherent sheet F are non negative, then uh, this actually vanishes uh, unless I is zero. So, a flat coherent sheet with non negative slopes, for example, a vector bundle with non negative slopes. Has only cohomology in degree zero on most of it. And uh, if you instead require that the slopes are strictly negative, pointwise and S, uh, then you only have cohomology in degree one. I is one. And so in the first case, uh, it, so in case one, I will write C of F for the only for the one which is not zero, so it is just a undivided push forward. And uh, in case two. I use the same notation, but not to denote the okay, and BC stands for Banner Colmes. So this is what the, we call the Banner Colmes space attached to this flat coherent sheet. Okay, so the terminology Banner Colmes space is a bit ambiguous. Uh, I mean, there is a well defined notion originally defined by Colmes uh, so, after uh, work of Fontaine of, of what the category of banner on the space is, uh, but since then the, the word has been used quite a lot. For example, in the work of Fark also in the maybe weaker and more vague sense. And here we do the same. I won't define. I won't give a proper definition of banner on the space. But for me, when I say banner on the space, this is what I mean. So I mean that it means that you have some. But coherent shifts uh, on, on the relative far content curve, some hypothesis on the slopes, and you take the cohomology degree zero or one. Okay, so it's a B shift. Uh, so it's, it's a shift for the B topology on the category of perfect space spaces uh, over S. Okay, so this is. Uh, Yes, so just it's B sheet of complexes is complexes of unstuck vector spaces over the year or something. Like what, what is the type of the value of the sheet on specific category? Uh, this will be uh, uh, like the half category of sheets of e vector spaces okay. uh, on uh, perf S. No, 
Yes. Yeah, these are not uh, all these uh, cohomology shifts are uh, shifts of e vector space. Spark of the leaves of our spark. So that does really mean so e is not really a constant shift, though, right? So e is continuous function. Yes, uh, I, I want to give this yeah. example now uh, because it's a little bit abstract. So let, let, let's look at some examples of vector uh, bundles or flat coherent shifts and see what this associated Bernard from the space is okay. Uh, no, but I mean, even when you're talking about the notion of a sheaf of E modules, like, yes, yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, okay, let's look at the simplest possible example. Let's look at the Bernard from the space attached to the structure sheet. So, I want this. I want to always write a subscript uh, xs. Uh, what is what is this thing? Uh, well, it's actually just given by <coughs> what Justin was just uh, speaking about, so uh, so called constant shift, but which is not a constant shift. So it's, it's an instance of the construction we already saw before. It's just uh, a shift which sends s. Any perpetuate space over a Q to a continuous function on S value as is locally for finite uh, and group. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Basically, yeah, this is what so basically, for example, this tells you that if S is a geometry point. Uh, what I'm telling you is that the cohomology of the super sheet on this absolute part contain curve is just P. So more the, it's like if the curve is a complete curve over span. Over sections are just the, uh, elements of the base field. Uh, let me point out that here you, you see that the relative curve it's as e is really not a product s times s. I mean, I would not know what this something would be, but I said several times that you can imagine that this relative far content curve XS is some kind of family of absolute far content curves parameterized by the geometric points of S. But this is some misguided intuition because uh, there is no morphism to S. And here we see that the behavior is really different from what you would uh, expect if you, like, say, you have a classical curve, smooth projective curve over a field. And uh, you do a similar thing, then what you should get uh, by this construction is a structure shape of S. Uh, something like this. So that's really different, but that's actually a nice feature, as you will see. So, okay, other examples. Uh, well, again, it's positive slope case, so only degree zero cohomology. Then, well, using what I so at the beginning about mobility, so relation with mobility groups, you can one can prove that this is isomorphic. Like it's representable this this one for a perfect space. So the uh, V site is subcanonical. So any representable <coughs> is a V site. Uh, it's isomorphic to uh, it's represented by the spa of a power series. In a perfectly variable C over FQ. So it's not analytic. This is the kind of examples we saw in the non perfectly setting in my second lecture. It's not a perfectly space. So I'm a bit cheating when I say it's representable. But if you if you fix S in perfect Q, if you fix a perfect Q case, then uh, this thing. We saw that already. Uh, base change to over spy FQ, base change to S uh, becomes uh, 
the uh, it is a perfectly open disk uh, over S. No, it's, uh, it's indeed a perfect space. Something you already told us about this example, right? You said this was the universal cover of the Lumen. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. That's how you would check this, for example. But so the universal, this uh, Lubinitite formal group law, uh, it would be isomorphic to represented by formal spectrum of uh, ring of power series in one variable because we are dealing with one dimensional formal group law. When I, you do this universal cover, it's like extracting piece roots of the coordinate on, the, on this group law. So it's replacing this formal disk by a perfectly formal disk. And this is what we see there. Can I just say, so, so these Banach Homer spaces, these are these sheaves of D vector spaces. Okay, uh, yeah, let me. Uh, okay, one, uh, two more examples. Uh, the BC of no, something which is not a vector bundle, but uh, it's a skyscraper sheet. If S is an empty, S sharp, so it's an empty of S uh, over E, uh, then I can look at this. Uh, we put it before skyscraper sheet supported at this empty. And well, what you get in this case, well, again, it's just degree zero, uh, the slope is plus infinity. Uh, so you just get, uh, well, homology of the skyscraper shift. So you see that this is just represented by affine, adic affine line over S. Again, represented, it's not exactly correct because this is not a perfect space. But it still makes sense to, uh, to look at the, uh, uh, Shift defined by any uh, any uh, active space. Uh, well, okay. Uh, maybe I should have given this example. Okay, yeah, like this little. Sorry, I have to to make sense of this. I have to add this uh, superscript down, uh, and I realize I did not define this yet. So uh, let me do that later. So uh, I, I will explain what this means. But I mean, you, you know what this, what this uh, concretely, you know what this shift is, right? If T is a perfect space over S, uh, what is it sent to? What is this BC space? Uh, it is sent to the unique uh, anti of T over S. -R. Unique because of this tilting equivalent. Say that whenever you fix a perfect space here uh, S, you have a correspondence between perfect spaces over S and perfect spaces over S sharp. Uh, And a final example uh, is the case I want to make a give an example where the slope is negative in this space of O minus one. Uh, to describe it, you one way to do it is to uh, again fix some anti uh, of S uh, over P, uh, giving rise to this Carty divisor on the curve. And then, uh, well, then that there is a short exact sequence of shifts like this uh, O minus one going to O uh, going to the skyscraper shift at S sharp. Like, this is locally uh, defined by one equation uh, corresponding to this non zero divisor. 
uh, xi inside uh, in uh, inside the heat vectors, and some of this map is just multi multiplication by this local uh, parameter. So you have such a short exact sequence of chips on the curve, and then you can take the long exact sequence of homologies. These two are only converging degree zero, and this one in degree one. And what you get is that when we already computed the BC space is attached to these two. Uh, you see that the BC of O minus one is A1 S sharp diamond. So again, I did not explain what this, just take this as a notation. I wrote the formula for what this uh, shift is uh, divided by uh, E underline. So this is the BC of O1 as a V-shift on perfect S. Okay, so it's a slightly strange object. You mod out a smooth, nice, smooth rigid space by a local component. Understanding correctly that so you have this other funny example, BC of O1. That is an extension of A1 by E, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah, okay. You also have a short exact sequence O going to O1. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is actually, as I said, this is used uh, like in the proof of the classification of line bundles. You start with, like, yeah. This exact sequence you mentioned is related to the uh, exact sequence coming from the logarithm of this right. format. Right. That's one way to see. At least that's what you think about such a And then I'm also remembering correctly that a general Banach space is always somehow built from products of copies of A1 and products of copies of E by some sort of extension to the quotient and so on. Uh, if S is a geometric point, that's indeed correct. Okay. Um, but yeah, then in general, well, using these resolutions I mentioned, you can always, if you want to put oh, okay. some statements, you can always reduce to, to and then to, to like line bundles, and then you do some daily search to reduce to the case, either skyscraper shift or this I see. Okay. <clears throat> so the in B should should that also should also should also be a diamond there. In example B, uh, that's not necessary because this is a space in characteristic P, yeah. um, a perfect well, almost perfect rate up to like phase change. So then I really just mean the sheet represented by this object. Uh, okay, and um, I, I just want to again some remarks. I just want to point point out two two facts that I. I find rather striking. Uh, the first one is is actually just a combination of two things I already said. So uh, in burn, say in burn n. So let me look at the substack where I fix the degree of the vector bundle to be n. Start at right now, n vector bundle. Uh, the substack uh, corresponding to uh, the vector bundles uh, on n vector bundles, uh, which are fiberwise from S uh, trivial. Whenever again, whenever I fix a geometric point of S, uh, I pull back my vector bundle on XS to the far content curve for this geometric point. I want my vector bundle to be just a trivial around n vector bundle. But by KDIU, we saw that uh, V locally on S, in fact, uh, this such a vector bundle has to be trivial. And we also computed global sections of the structure sheet. So this is the BC space of O. And we saw that this is uh, identifies with this uh, V shift E underline. So if you put these two facts together, uh, so this substack, I can call it uh, 
but n zero. Uh, we have mesomorphism in this substack, and the classifying stack of uh, of uh, the uh, v shift uh, uh, associated to the locally profinite group GLN. Right? And again, this follows from what I, I said before. Any such will V locally be isomorphic to the trivial bundle. So there is just one point. And we just then need to determine the automorphism uh, group of the trivial bundle. So we need to see what the functor sending S in pair. Q to uh, automorphisms of the trivial bundle of rank N looks like. And we claim that this is just this underlying GLN because we are basically because of the example A. So uh, it's in fact, it's non trivial, but it's in fact an open substack in being by A. Uh, so here again, you see that the behavior is very different from what you would expect if you look at the algebraic stack of vector bundles of rank n on some classical smooth projective curve. So very different. Projective curve where the substack where the vector bundle is trivial, say, uh, would be uh, more something like uh, whatever the phase is, uh, and modeled by GLN, but seen as an algebraic group. Right? Because if, if instead of XS, you have something like X times S, where X is a smooth projective curve over field K, and S is a scheme over K, if you look at such a functor, this is just. Uh, Sending uh, S spec A, this is just A goes to GLN of A. Okay. So this is what you see in the classical situation. Well, you have a GLN analogy. Is that the correct analogy? Isn't it a moving curve of S in the analogy? Yes, and that's why that's I. Why it's not a moving curve, it's a constant curve. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, when I'm, I'm referring to the usual situation considered in, in geometric lambdas, uh, where you have fixed a curve over K, and then you, you look at the moduli stack you define is the one sending S, the scheme over K to uh, vector bundles over X times S. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, the geometric object is not very interesting, it's just a product, but the stack itself is something that people work with in geometric lambda. And this is the kind of thing you would see uh, inside this stack. Well, here we have something very different. We have replaced this algebraic group by just like the shift attached to a locally profile group. And this is great because this means that shifts, elliptic shifts on this are not very interesting. Very interesting because this is connected. But here, they would correspond to representations, elliptic representations of this group. And we have a lot of interesting representation, basically the one which I'm studying in the local London program. So uh, more on this uh, next time, but I wanted to point it out. And for example, a uh, particular case, uh, if n is one, so then burn one is just like the picker stack of this particular curve. And then you can really completely describe the structure. It's, it's really simple. Line bundles are indexed by the degree. So this gives the decomposition into connected components. And the thing I explained for the trivial bundle works as well for O of D. And what you see is just an element of the specifying stats. So this is what this stack looks like. Uh, okay, this was uh, fact one. Uh, second fact is that uh, the functor, I 
had before, which I used it by Alto Rasta. Uh, in fact, you can consider it for like perfect complexes on this variety of our content curve, going to uh, the right category of types of underlying E modules on the V side of S. Uh, this is fully faithful. Uh, but this holds for any S. So, in, in particular, you have the following identification. And uh, if you look at how uh, for the star of the internal home uh, of inside the category of OXS modules between say any ultra bundle, for example, and the structure sheet, uh, then this is this is isomorphic to uh, internal home in the category, in this particular category of uh, sheets of e modules between this push formal and e and that. Um, well, okay. In some sense, you can think to this as um, cell reality on the part of the part. Of the part. This thing is always of the reference story. Why is that cell reality? Why is that cell reality? Uh, well, because I mean, this is telling you that. Uh, the dual of uh, cohomology is uh, cohomology of the dual. That's what I think. This is a cell. It's like if the dualizing shift was just a structure shift on this curve. This is not cell reality in any literal sense because the curve is not a fine type over E, it does not map to S. So there is nothing like cell reality on the curve, but this statement makes sense. It's true. And uh, I don't know. Right? One can see to it as well, there is right. This is the, the dual of B. So oh, there is no dualizing sheet. That's maybe this fully faithful statement. It's just it never holds in the geometric. Yeah, exactly. It's completely ridiculous. Imagine you take <laughs> like the structure shift on the skyscraper shift at the point. Yeah, they are not distinguished by this. Uh, by, by doing this. well, in G is bigger than zero, they are distinguished. Right? Okay, yeah, I was thinking to, to Q1. Yeah, um, Q1, yeah, but even for, I mean, for uh, some kind of maybe analog of, of this is okay. I think for Q1, which again is sometimes a good analog of this curve, uh, there is still a description of uh, instead of taking cohomology, which is like taking our home from O, things work better for Q1. To, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is, in fact, this functor is not like <coughs> is not exact, but you, you 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 go from one descriptor to the other by some simple operation, which is actually also the same you have to do when you look at like, identify the art category of sheets on P1, polygon sheets with the representation of this quiver. But still, yeah, it's it's I think it's quite surprising. And the way, uh, so it's something I, I proved with uh, Anschutz. Uh, we will need it for uh, the next lecture, this, this statement. And this reduces actually in a in funny way, this reduces to a state, a result of print. We print computed uh, uh, set extensions. Of GA, it's a sheet, uh, the structure sheet on the perfect site, perfect algebra site, you know, of a uh, spec. Uh, it proved that there are no, uh, if you look at GA as a sheet of FQ vector spaces, there are no higher extensions of set extensions of GA on this side. Uh, because if you take the perfect side, 
he, he, he did in fact much better. He, he, he computed all the extensions like without this perfect assumption, and then the structure is more complicated and it's related to. And I was told it's uh, related to the computation of THH of the P. Um, so, but on when you go to the perfect side, so you invert for Benius somehow, then nothing remains in positive degrees. Um, as Dustin pointed out before, like some statements about BC spaces, you can reduce to the case of uh, to this case is uh, uh, A and C, where some BD such. Uh, understanding uh, proving such a statement in the end is reduced to computing some extensions on the V side uh, between this kind of object um, yeah, to, to work and, but ultimately you can reduce to, to bring stuff. I want to point out that this this is exactly star duality because the this you know the solid cotangent complex of the far contend curve over E is trivial. It's zero. Yeah, I was hoping there's something like zero. Okay. Yeah, so the top vector power is zero. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean zero. And so the top vector power is the trivial sheet. <laughs> yes. oh, okay. yeah. So in practice, the to be identity is one. Yes. Anyway. In practice, in many situations, I notice that you can, if you have some statements, um, Classical geometric lambdas, which involve the geolating shift, you replace them, you replace it here with a structure shift and it works. Yeah, but this gives a reason why. But that's exactly the reason the exactly. Okay, good to know. Did you say this in solid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great. So, uh, okay, let me just uh, finish by a brief discussion of diamonds um, so okay so this vc spaces uh, so this cohomology uh, groups of vector bundles or flat coherent shifts on the curve so we saw that, okay, they are defined as v shifts but in fact they have more structure uh, and this is uh, that there are some kind of geometric objects and they are like diamonds in the sense of, of short uh, so the definition is of the diamond is as follows. So uh, again, you fix perfectly also of a few, and then the diamond uh, over S. You could also just take S to be FQ itself, and then it's not a perfectly straight. Uh, this is a V sheet. Uh, let's say Y. On uh, the category of perfectly spaces over S that can be written as a uh, proportion of a certain perfect width space. Uh, by some uh, equivalence relation. So Z here is required to be a perfect width space. Uh, over S and R like X and X and uh, equivalent relation uh, represented uh, also by a perfect width space and such that it's a quite equivalence relation so such that the projection map So I did not define what Poetal properly means, and I don't want to do that, but it's just inverse system of etal morphisms. So this is an analog in this setting of uh, algebraic spaces in algebraic geometry. Except that, well, usually one requires Z to be a scheme, here one requires Z to be a particular space. And usually one works with the etal topology, and here one instead works with the poet Now this is a VC for sets. No, no, this is a VC for sets. 
for set S. Uh, okay, so this is a general abstract definition. Uh, one can prove many basic statements about uh, such objects. Uh, so, okay, I don't have so much time left, so let me just again give examples. Uh, so, first of all, well, tautologically, in any perfect wave space, let's see. Uh, over S defines the diamond over S simply by taking C uh, H of C, the, the shift represented by Z. This was so uh, and VX is C. Yeah. Z, sorry? Z. This equivalence relation, this is the sequence. Ah, thank you. Yes. Uh, other example is we saw that any topological space gives rise to this sheet. Uh, not all of them give rise to diamonds, but uh, any uh, if t compact of the space then the shift associated to t t on the line is a diamond uh, on curve s for any S in perfect Q. Uh, and it, it, it's even represented by it's even a perfect wave space. It's profile. And this is how we actually prove uh, the diamond. So first we check that if T is for finite, so it's by definition the inverse limit of finite sets. Uh, okay, finite sets would be represented by finitely uh, many copies of the base perfect wave space S, and the inverse limits of perfect wave spaces are still perfect wave spaces. So, uh, in the proper case, you get this representability statement. And then there is a nice trick that I think most of you know because you learn condensed mathematics that you uh, uh, take T with a discrete topology mapping to T continuously, and you look at the strong charge compactification of. Uh, this discrete space. This will be a profinite uh, topological space mapping subjectively on T. And in particular, this will give you the desired cover uh, of T underlying by something, uh, the shift attached to profinite set, which is perfect. It was the basic idea of the argument. Uh, very abstract. But... Okay. So I started 10 minutes late. So. Take a bit more time. Um, so just write what I said, tricks, and then to the custom church. Of T with a discrete uh, okay, more interesting, maybe uh, it is more relevant to PLG geometry class of examples. Uh, is that any there is a natural functor from analytic edge spaces over the key. Uh, towards diamonds. And this functor is denoted x goes to x diamond. This is a notation I already used in the example before. 
uh, how does that work? Well, whenever you have such an analytical space X, alpha in line was a nice example. Uh, you can consider the functor which sends S perfect to its space over a Q to uh, the set of uh, equivalence classes of until S sharp of S. Uh, leading over it. So if X is perfectly again, okay, if X uh, is a perfectly space, but no in any characteristics, so possibly uh, over a type, like not necessarily characteristic P, uh, X. Is actually x down, I'm sorry, is the same as the shift represented by uh, x tilt. This is because of the tilting equivalent. Again, uh, giving yourself a perfect space, sorry, yeah, a perfect space over x is the same as giving yourself a perfect space over x and tilt. Uh, over x tilt. And this is why, uh, in the perfect case, we just uh, we are just somehow moving to characteristics. We, we could call it tilt in general, couldn't we? Yes, we could. That's, a, that's some extension of the tilting functor to all analytical experiences. Yes. So, a related question. So, can I write that this is a, actually a composition of two functors, like one for shifts over perfectly spaces of the CP and another which is some push or pull back of some multiple type? Uh, maybe uh, can you be so like if I just replace s sharp by like, you know just test test x against like perfect space in characteristic zero and then we have like a tilting functor and we compose the model at the time yeah right right, right. okay yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I did not get it but, uh, yeah, you look at all perfectoids mapping to your guy and you tilt those. And you take the coordinate over there and you present it in this form. Um, yeah, as a remark uh, here, what happens is you take the, this relative part of the curve when you tilt it, you take the associated diamond. Uh, then it's in fact uh, it really becomes some kind of product. So it's a product of a uh, diamond attached to spa E with a uh, diamond of S, which S being perfectly in characteristic P is just the S itself over spa E Q. I mean over the final object of purpose of uh, these sheets uh, on perfect Q, and you still need to model by Frobenius. The Frobenius surface. So in the world of added spaces, there is no, I mean, except in characteristic P, we saw that like the part of the curve was defined like by modeling out Y by Frobenius and Y was literally a product. And I said, this is not true in mixed characteristic, but this is somehow restored, symmetry is somehow restored in this world of diamonds where this, uh, the associated diamond really becomes a product. And this follows from, this identification follows from uh, the discussion I had last time about the uh, relation between uh, the far content curve and tilt. Did you say that this function is fully faithful? Uh, I guess it's not, but it is if you uh, remember the morphism to spark QP. Yeah. But it's not fully faithful. Like all antics get mapped to the same. Common. Uh, okay, so uh, I just finish with the proposition on the remark. So uh, if S is in perfect Q, uh, and F is a path to Hilan shift, uh, and I will assume that we so speak meaningfully about the associated DC space, let me assume that it has either. Uh, everywhere 
non-negative source or everywhere negative source have always s then c of f is about <coughs> So, uh, so in point three, I forgot to say something about how, how do you prove such a statement? Well, it's a bit tricky in general, but in the smooth case, when you start with something which is smooth over non Archimedean field, say locally you are just etal over the torus. And for the torus, you have a nice perfectly, let, let's just, if you just look at the case of the torus, for example, like this, and let's assume that. Yeah, the base, I have some non Archimedean base field, which is automatically closed, and you have something like this, so rigid and magnetic torus, uh, saying that the associated object is, is, is a diamond in, the, in this sense is basically saying that what you want to do is to be able to find a perfect space mapping to this, and such that. Uh, uh, so uh, subjectively onto it, and so that the associated uh, equivalence relation is uh, has this property of being for it. But what you can do is extracting these fruits of the problem, and this defines a poetal uh, Galois color with uh, Galois with ZP. And so it's this sense what you have here, this uh, smooth addic space. Is uh, the quotient of this perfect field space uh, by, the, by the key. So the basic idea that you have to, to improve enough to, to make it work in general. Uh, okay, and that's one point I'm about is that uh, if you look now, uh, let me recall the uh, from last time. But T1P is the moduli of effective relative Cartier divisors in the one on the curve. So namely the, the functor sending perfectly in space S to the degree uh, one Cartier divisors on the curve. We saw that this is the same as the functor in S for until S sharp of S over E. And this was its correspondence with the degree one Cartier divisors on the curve and until. So, what does that tell me? That tell me that this is the one of E is isomorphic to the diamond of Right, because by definition, the diamond of E is exactly this one. And uh, well, um, okay, uh, here I have you, you have to model by Frobenius action. So, here as well, you have to model by Frobenius. And so, in the first lecture, I explained that you can prove an ramified global class field theory uh, uh, as uh, the Lean did using the Abel Jacobi morphism. Here you can try to also consider the Abel Jacobi morphism in degree one, say. And maybe I will do it after base change to, to F2 bar instead of working on category of perfectly spaces over F2. Let me do it over F2 bar. What does it look like? Well, so it has to go from degree one Cartier divisors to Equal in base change to F2 bar over there. But I already described both sides. Here I just did it. I'm doing this base changes where Q bar is in fact just amounts to replacing E by its unramified uh, maximum unramified extension. And what we have here, we saw before what is still over there, the component of degree one. It's just the classifying stack of our two bar. Oops. Okay. And so this leads uh, to the fact 
Park's observation is this description, this funny description, in fact, tells you that uh, also in this setting, and this is maybe the first case where we see the relation between this pair and uh, local Langhorne's program. Uh, you can so you can reformulate local class field theory as saying that any what is a least elastic shift on this, it's essentially a representation of the very group, right? Because here's the pi one, the Galois group of E breve is the inertia subgroup of the Galois group of E, and you need to add this action of Frobenius. So, what local class field theory is about is proving that any least elastic shift on this. In fact, comes via pullback from a shift here, the least shift here, along pullback along the Sabelle Jacobian. Because here you see just representations of E cross and E cross. Well, this is what the Abelian uh, local class field theory tells you that Abelianization of, of the main group is exactly E cross. Um, and you can then indeed prove it, reprove it. Uh, using this geometric technique uh, initiated by the okay sorry uh, yeah that's all for today very just the existence of this album gives you like the inverse of the art of right like when you take pi one yes and uh, checking that the reciprocity map you get in this way is the same as the usual Hartig map. Is precisely by relating. Okay, like what is the fiber of this? So here you parameterize uh, line bundle plus non-zero section, right? So the fiber is, is uh, I should have said this too, is the VC of O1 minus zero. Mm -hmm. And because of the relation between UB type format group laws and this line bundle, you can actually prove that what you are doing is the same as what UB type Hartig. Uh, I see. So that's how you relate ah. to construction. I see. Yeah. You, you don't need, of course, you don't need the proof of class with theory, but you need the existence of formal group laws. Yeah.